Shares of HashiCorp rallied today after beating Wall Street expectations in its fourth quarter earnings report. Guidance came in weaker than expected, though. For more on those results, let's bring in HashiCorp CEO Dave McJanet. Dave, welcome. Nice to have you on a day when the stock's been higher. And I wonder about this. We just had Matthew Prince on from Cloudflare, multi-cloud, a big uh, topic here in enterprise. What are the trends that you're seeing both supporting growth and um, perhaps not as much growth as soon as some analysts had expected? Hey, John, thanks for having me. Yeah, there's, there, there, there are probably several countervailing things going on. I think number one is we're going through this optimization cycle in the infrastructure market for the last 18 months or so. And certainly, you know, that, that shows signs of uh, being closer to the end than, than the beginning. And that, that's, a, that's a positive. Uh, on the, on the, sort of the new business side, what you're really seeing is, you know, the market's settling into a, a steady state. There are reasons for deploying things in cloud. There are th reasons for deploying things on private data centers. There are things, the reasons for deploying apps on edge, like with Cloudflare. And that's just the, 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 where the market has settled in. So certainly optimization cycles certainly seem to be a little bit better than they were. But that sort of inexorable trend of deploying new things to new infrastructure types uh, is just the way the market you know, always, always will work. And that's, that's kind of what's driving the steady state of growth, I think, for all of us. We've been talking a lot over the past year about subscription models versus consumption models and a lot of enterprise companies sort of wanting to dip their toe in the water, even if it's going to end up costing them more at some point by going with consumption. Uh, if, if I recall, you guys are more on a subscription model. How is the appetite for that uh, kind of stabilizing or, or shaping up as overall I'm hearing that enterprise is getting a bit more predictable? Yes, I think I think at the infrastructure layer, there, there's always been a bias for the subscription, uh, sort of this consumption-based model because it's a bit like utility. It's hard to predict what you're going to use, but you know you're going to need some of it. So I think always there always has been, always will be a desire for those consumption type of models. Now there are pros and cons of that. When people are growing more than they expected, that's good for vendors. When a contraction cycle hit, hits, that's you know that causes revenue to decelerate in a way that's a little bit unpredictable. But I think overall that trend is inexorable. You see Snowflake and others using that model. You see the cloud providers using that model. And I think the enterprise appetite for that model is appropriate. I think you know, it, it's taken a while to get people comfortable with it, but it's very clear that infrastructure is a bit like a utility and people want to consume it that way. As you point out, uh, we predominantly op offer a, a subscription-based model, so not a consumption-based model uh, to, our, to our offerings. And that's appropriate for us, given that so much of our products are installed on places like Cloudflare and on private data centers. We don't have this single way of consuming, but it's certainly something our customers would like. And I think it's something you'll see in the future for most uh, infrastructure companies. Uh, HashiCorp at this point doesn't seem to be generating a ton of extra cash. So why the buyback authorization? Yeah, so we flipped into the cash flow generation mode a couple of quarters ago, and we indicated from here forward, uh, we expect to be cash flow uh, from operations generating, and that puts us in a, in a good, comfortable position to be able to decide what best to do with the, the capital we have on our balance sheet. We have about $1.3 billion in capital on our balance sheet, which is certainly large enough to sustain what we need to do. And we just think the time is right. Uh, we think our, our, you know, we're, we're optimistic about our future, and we think that the time is right to use some of that excess capital for the you know, share repurchase that we announced the, earlier today. But it's really underpinned by the fact that we're, you know, we're a cash generating entity, and you know, we've matured to that stage. And it's sort of a, a logical, responsible thing to do as we think about how best to grow shareholder value over the longer term. I'm sure that factors into some degree in the uh, stock investor reaction here, but what does it do for you from an M&A perspective? Does it constrain you at all if you want to buy stuff? No, it really doesn't because, again, we're generating, we're generating cash. We have uh, $1.3 billion in cash and marketable securities on the balance sheet. So really, you know, as, as a percentage of our overall value, our cash position is a substantial portion. So I think we're very, very well positioned to be able to have whatever flexibility required to, to keep investing in the things that we see in front of us. But for now, it seems like a you know, good, prudent use for capital.